welcome to the First United Methodist Church online worship service. Today's service is performed by Pastor Aaron Ackney. Now here is today's service. I was going to tell you uh, a little bit of an introduction about a, an acre. You know what an acre is? Now, if you're from the north, it's called an acorn. We call them acorns. And I've told you that story before, and I brought an acorn from my pocket, and I was going to make a parallel between our life. But I said, I said, no, I need to remind Rusty Bailey that he needs to get to the woods more. So I gave him the acres. But I was thinking this morning, uh, I was listening to some songs on a CD, and the song, Great Is Thy Faithfulness, you know, it's just a song that to me spoke about today. And the one verse I really like, it says, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I've needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Not what we want, but he gives us what we need. Sometimes we might not like it. It might not be quite what we had in mind for our life. But anyway, that stuff that we just... Just that verse. I just throw that out to you, being thankful this morning. Uh, good many announcements. One, one or two that have been added in um, is that after the service, after the meal, uh, a lot of the women and some of you guys need you over there to, over here to decorate for Christmas. So if you have time afterwards, you're not too full, you're not going to take a nap and come over <laughs> to the church. Uh, and also, Sandy Buckcamp is. She's doing a, a book on the Pumpkin Patch people. She's got it right there. It's got photographs. And she needs the names of anybody, any of y'all that haven't gotten in touch with her, uh, to get in touch with her and add that so you can add the name to the book. Um, if you look in your bullets and you'll see there's a good many announcements supposed to be watching today. Um, Tuscanoogie Church, and the pastor there is one of our own, Dusty Bailey. Uh, they're having a barbecue fundraiser at their church on November 24th. And uh, the Advent concert, uh, Lucas Miller, Friday, December the 3rd. And then the, the women's ladies uh, Christmas brunch. And that'll be on December 4th at, in the Fellowship Hall, right? Okay. Yes. That's December for all, all the women in the church. Um, I think that's all the announcements. So try to come over afterwards. If you, if you didn't bring a plate, come on over. There'll be plenty of food over there.
Thanksgiving if you'll read the bulletin. Thanks to God for our Redeemer. Thanks for all that God provides. Thanks for times now with a memory. Thanks for Jesus by our sides. Thanks for pleasant, balmy springtime. Thanks for dark and dreary fall. Thanks for tears by now forgotten. Thanks for peace within our souls. Thanks for prayers that have been answered. Thanks for things that are really nice. Thanks for storms that we have weathered. Thanks for all that God supplies. Thanks for pain. Thanks for pleasure. Thanks for comfort and despair. Thanks for grace that none can measure. Thanks for love beyond compare. Thanks for roses by the wayside. And thanks for thorns, fish, and name. Thanks for home and thanks for fireside. Thanks for all Thanks for joy and thanks for sorrow. Thanks for heavenly peace in thee. Thanks for hope in the tomorrow. Thanks for all eternity.
monetarily. Uh, we want you to take those and use them uh, whatever way you can to reach out to other people and make that our mission to be people of God that want to reach out to others and just dedicate ourselves to you to teach us new things and to use this gifts that we give today for your service on the Let's give your name. Will you join with me in our traditional prayer? Father, as we come to this moment now in our worship today, I ask that either through me or in spite of me, you would speak to us and our lives would be changed. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Psalm 103, probably one of the best known and most loved psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. You might make that personal, something like this. I said to myself, Aaron, you need to get on your knees and thank God, remembering all the good things God has done for and made available to you. This is probably one of the premier verses for us to wake up with on our minds. What a great thought to have first thing every morning. Now, let's be honest. Thanksgiving, giving thanks, apart from the turkey feast on the third Thursday of November, that's not a normal part of many lives, is it? Jesus told a parable of ten lepers that were healed and only one came back to give thanks. That's a lot of what we're looking at, even today. Try to find any kind of a picture or card about Thanksgiving that does not include a smiling turkey. I mean, think about that. Really? A smiling turkey? And this idea about happy Thanksgiving, isn't that a miscue from our culture? I mean, happiness is not what this is about, is it? Not really. Unfortunately, a true attitude of gratitude is not evident as we go about our daily lives in the world. In fact, many times what we see is to the contrary. Many people display a chip on their shoulder. They portray a possessive and brash and arrogant attitude and talk like as if life owes them. You owe me, and he owes me, and the boss owes me, and the government owes me, and the insurance company owes me, and the team owes me, and the company owes me. Everybody seems to owe them. Somehow, they've convinced themselves that they deserve certain things in life, good things they want, that act like as if it's their right to have these things given to them. I'm suggesting that Thanksgiving is not really a common attitude. People seem hard pressed to think what to be thankful for. And 
I believe that's where the secret to thanksgiving lies. Thanksgiving takes special thinking. Thanksgiving takes special thinking. In fact, good thinking always precedes thanksgiving. Not everyone can think in thankful ways. Well, what is thankful thinking, you might ask? So let's take our cue from the psalmist this morning. He says, thankful thinking begins with thinking about God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Thinking about God says a lot, doesn't it? I mean, isn't the heart of virtually all our issues today centered on the fact that too many people do not think about God? And in relation to thanksgiving, if one believes that we, humans, have merely evolved naturally from animals, and we have not been created by God, then why think about God? And when we don't think about God, who is there to thank for our lives? If we trudge around each day lamenting that stuff happens, or we act like as if life is a bear and then you die, then what is there to be thankful for? If we cannot think that every good and perfect gift comes down from God our Father from above, then why would we be thankful? Who would we thank? Yeah, it's when we think about God that we become thankful. And then the psalmist also speaks about a specific type of thinking related to our memories. When we think about or we remember the good things, the benefits, the advantages that we have received from God in the past, which has enabled us to be where we are today. You know, when we think about things like forgiveness and healing and salvation, or our possessions and our family and our connections, and our blessings. And again, the psalmist says in verse 10, we should think and remember that God has not treated us as we deserve. He has not punished us each time we mess up. He hasn't penalized us every time we've departed from the truth or his word. He did not immediately strike us down in our sins. I mean, this type of thinking is good thinking. It's done by insightful people. And when we think this way, it brings us to the conclusion that we have many blessings 
for which we should be continually thankful. Just like the old song says, count your many blessings, name them one by one, see the things that God has done. Yeah, it's this type of thinking that allows us to recognize our benefits before they get taken away from us. I mean, everyone misses and appreciates something when they no longer have it, right? But if we can do this type of thinking, we can be thankful before we lose things. And that's good, thankful thinking. Let me give us just one example. Take the air that we breathe. Few of us think to be thankful for every breath we take. I mean, we just breathe in and breathe out somewhere between 9 and 13 times a, a minute unconsciously. That is unconsciously unless and until we have the wind knocked out of us. Or somehow we have the air choked out of us. And then, all of a sudden, it becomes critically obvious what a gift each breath we take is. When we do this type of thinking and remembering, it'll take us beyond the past and help us to be thankful moment by moment in our lives. That's when we are truly thinking thankfully. We are giving thanks in every circumstance, just like Paul advised us to do. Every time someone says something nice, or things go just like we had planned, or we're given a gift, or some helpful connections are made, every time we sit down and have enough food to eat, all of these things should show us the need for us to live in thankfulness. Paul says, in all things, give thanks. This should be our thought process. Notice Paul did not say to be thankful for all things. He says, we need to be thankful in all things. And this is the truth, church. This type of thinking is really healthy, good, helpful thinking for us to participate in. People who think this way are the happiest most fulfilled people in the world. And that's the truth. So I just want to give us three practical suggestions to implement thankfulness in our lives. Practical suggestion number one. Write some long overdue thank you notes. Think back, remember people who have done things that have impacted us, and then write them a note. Don't call them, write them a note. 
I have read where some doctors actually prescribe that as therapy for some of their patients. I recall the story of Bill. Bill was a pastor slash professor who suffered a nervous breakdown and was filled with depression to the point where he cared nothing for nobody. <clears throat> he recovered from that by thinking, remembering people in his past who did have a positive impact on him and he had never thanked them. So, each day he sat down and wrote one note. One of those notes was to Mabel Smith, one of his middle school teachers. Here is her reply to his note. Dear Willie, after all these years, she even remembered his nickname. When I read your letter, I was blinded by tears. I could still see you sitting in my classroom. This letter warmed my heart. After 50 years of teaching, this is the first letter of thanks from a former student. I shall cherish it till I die. Yeah, this is great medicine. And Bill kept writing day after day until he had accumulated over 500 notes. And by the way, totally chased away his depression. It's practical suggestion number two. Say the words, thank you, at least 30 times every day. I'm not kidding. Literally, try that. At the beginning, you might have to keep track of each time you say that so that you can count them up to get the 30. Begin thanking everybody for absolutely everything. Make it a game if you have to. Even if you feel like you're just being crazy, do it anyway. It works. Life is short. Get as many thank yous in as you can. And then practice a practical suggestion number three. Think about and then thank God for your salvation, for the assurance of your eternal life. And the best way to do this is by the way we follow his word and his will now that we are one of his children. Of course, we can never repay God. That's impossible. But we can join with God and offer ourselves as living sacrifices, helping other people. This shows God our thankfulness. Remember what Jesus said? What you do to one of the least of these, you do to me. The Gospel of Luke refers to the least, the last, the lost, and the lonely. When you think about that group, I know I am guilty of not helping them enough. And the psalmist reminds us that at the heart of our thanksgiving, of our thankfulness, is our 
salvation. So living like people who have been redeemed by Christ, living as people who make Christ the Lord of our lives, is the best way for us to be thankful for our salvation. Now in the Old Testament, salvation language includes descriptions about God's love and mercy. In this psalm, we see it in verses 4 and 8 and 11 and 17, referring to our salvation, God's plan, His gift for our eternal lives. And when we contemplate our salvation, it becomes obvious to us that that is nothing that's owed to us. It's nothing due to us. It's nothing we have earned or we deserve. It's not some reward for us. Rather, our salvation is awarded to us as a gift at a great price. It comes from the sacrificial blood of Jesus dying in our place. Everyone who turns to him as their savior is given that gift. Where would we be without salvation in our lives? Think about that for a moment. That's a serious question. Without the assurance of our salvation, would not life be ugly? Would life not be futile? What could our attitude and behavior be like without the hope of God's love and eternal life? And as we think about that seriously, that should help us be able to reach out and understand people in the world who do not have the assurance of their salvation. We should relate to them differently because we see what their problem is. What would cause us to care and love others if it was not for the fact that we have been cared and loved for by God? And if you're not experiencing that in your life, why? What would be the expectation that we would see that from those people? So when we're walking around in the world this week, and we're looking at the people who do not have that faith, maybe it will change our reactions to them. Here's the truth, church. We have received a gift that is impossible to adequately return thanks for. The best we can do is to live in accord with the very life we have been given. To live just like a child of God. Thanks living should be the motive for all of our good deeds then. The goodness that comes out of us has nothing to do with gaining anything and everything to do with showing what we have gained.
So when we think clearly and rightly, we are drawn into thankfulness. And that thankfulness has everything to do with how we live. Over two decades ago, I had my first experience in a corporate prayer it changed my understanding about praying. We were in a rather large group, and the leader opened up the prayer, asking each of us to pray personal prayers out loud. And he said, I'm not talking about praying so everybody in the room can hear you and know what you're praying. I'm talking about you in your own personal life, talking to your father out loud, just you and him. And he said, and as you do that, you need to know everybody in here is doing that. And while you're praying, listen. Listen to the beauty of prayer as God hears it. So I'm going to invite us into a time of thankful prayer today. Each of us thanking God out loud, speaking to our Father. And while you're praying, listen to the beauty of thankfulness in God's ears. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you know this prayer could go on and on and on because we would never be able to exhaust the list of the things that we have to be thankful for. But in the power of this moment, Lord, impress us with the need in our lives to both express our thanks and then to live out our thanks to you. Each of us and all of us. In Christ's name, amen.
person around us. Thank you, Lord, Christ. In each circumstance we face. Thank you for joining us. God bless you until we meet again.